Hello and welcome to Prelude Number no. 5 by Villa Lobos, the final part, part 3. We're going to be diving into that third section, it's A major chords and all the fingerings and hacks that you need to get this up and running and playable. So without further ado, let's dive straight into Prelude Number no. 5 by Villa Lobos, part 3. We're kicking it off with the last section to learn. We're in the key of A major, so we have had a key change, very, very important, from D to A, up a fifth, if you want to be technical. Second finger off, you are then going to slide into third position, two, half bar, th one, one, at the third fret, so two on fret four. Fourth finger, to third finger, because remember we've got a G sharp there, and here we go. Is that bass on the fourth beat and then that third finger is going to guide up to nine half bar at seven all bar and then you're going to shoot back down to first position so there's nothing really to this just a lot of good finger work I'm stopping the bass there. Two E's into the A. You're going to have to come back up to stop the low E, otherwise it's going to ring over and sound crap. So from this point on, we have this fantastic uh, little arpeggio. All, one, two, one, two. I use a third finger here. Open, second finger, at 10, 9, 12, open. Using P, I, M, A, I, M, A, M from a right hand perspective. It's a lovely scale, there's nothing really technical about it other than an A major arpeggio. And honestly, if you've done your edgy number two, you will find it a walk in the bark. All right, let's put this all together now for the first micro study and let's see where we get. Apparently, according to the manuscript, this all was originally in 3 4 and Villa Lobos has changed it to 6 4, which is why we get this 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 6. Is a swing to it so make sure that the bass is full on the one and the fourth beat welcome to micro study number two so again here we go we're gonna kick it off straight away into chords a sharp second finger half bar across one to get the C sharp in and third finger for the G natural third finger off to expose the F sharp then your second finger is gonna guide up to the fifth fret here I am using my fourth finger on the B and there we go bass note on that uh, chord there are a couple of ways of fingering the next two chords I'm going to go through mine the first one is a two stretching out to a one at seven and then I am using my fourth finger for the D and then my third finger to the C sharp because I play the next chord up at seven However, it is possible to refinger this. You need to go the chord before again. Third finger, first finger guides up, third finger goes on to the E at nine, fourth finger onto the D, fourth finger slides down to the C sharp, and then you can guide with your third finger all the way down to the B minor at second position. Either way, it it's a good couple of options there for you. Try them both, pick the one that suits your style of playing. So once we're in that B minor chord, depending on where you are, it is going to be A sharp to B, open D to an F sharp, I'm using hammer-ons yes, and then we're into a B minor chord. So fourth, three, four at fourth, two at three, one at two, 
and then you're going to slide up, 7, 9, 10, and then you're going to kick it back down to first position for the next chord. However, if you chose my fingering option, 7th fret, 1st finger slides down, A sharp to B, and then open D, hammer on, 4th finger, 2nd finger, 1st finger, and then back down to 1st position. So it really depends on, on how you tackle that uh, B minor chord. Either way, again, you have options, but they all revolve around being able to play that B minor chord there. It is possible to finger that um, arpeggio another way, where you, you stay at the fifth position if you want. Um, into a seventh fret bar. That is an option as well, if you so desire it, using an open B string to facilitate. So there it's uh, six, seven, five, eight, open, seven, seven, nine, ten. Either way, you're gonna have to head down to there, or if you really, really want to, you can play that chord there. So let's have a look at this nice and slowly again. the key takeaways here though leave your first finger down so that you can guide down very quickly into that sort of a half diminished chord there and in the next bar alrighty welcome to the third micro study um, we left it off here in position one with with this fantastic half diminished chord so I'm using one three four with an open A in the bass now we have an F double sharp, which is a G, to a G sharp, to a B. Now you can hammer these on if you want to, um, but there is a variety of ways of fingering this. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways. So F double sharp to G, hammer on beats D, two, one, open. It's a bit of a stretch, but it is possible. The other option is F double sharp, B, open D, hammer on F natural, G sharp, B. It doesn't matter which way you do it, find the one that suits your finger and your playing style. Once you've done that, I don't suggest you do the D, F natural, and G sharp in the first position. I suggest that you do it up here up at 9th fret so that you can get into the next chord easily. Break. You can do it down here, in which case your 4th finger is going to guide up into the next chord. The next chord is half bar 10, 4th finger on the high E, expose the D, then half bar at 7 with the 3rd finger on the C sharp. And then move down to fret three. So we're starting to see chords that we've seen before then. The other key thing to keep in mind here is chord one, two, three, four. Chord five, we have a new bass note. So you are gonna have to use the back of your thumb to stop the A. So that the A doesn't ring over. We also have a bit of a discrepancy between the manuscript and the 1950 edition. We have in the 1950, and according to uh, Frederick Ziganti, it should be. That choice is yours, either a G natural or a G sharp. I've been playing the 1950 so long now that it sounds wrong with a G natural, but again, use your ears. So, nice and slowly, all together, this looks like... And just 
a quick notice how my second finger just guided down into that next chord. Smart fingering will help you immensely here to getting these chords legato. Let's check out the next micro study. Quick interruption here. If you want to get in ahead of the action on this channel, consider hitting the like button and possibly even oh, subscribing to the channel. There is a ton of new content coming your way, so this will get you ahead of the queue. Right, let's dive straight back into prelude number five. Alrighty, welcome to the what is essentially the turnaround bars here. We left it off essentially with an F sharp seven over an E. Stay in second position for that half bar because then you're going to use three and four to play the next chord. It's so the F sharp, A, and E, and then you're going to move into a B minor. So your third finger is going to act as an anchor, second finger goes down, full bar across two. Second finger comes up, exposes C, C sharp. Now there's a couple of ways of fingering the next chord. I prefer to use that fingering into those three chords because it just makes it easier, but it is possible to do that as well. So that bar looks like this slowly. And then moving on into the next bar, second finger comes down. Right hand is doing all the selecting here and then we move into a B7 chord. So your second finger goes up to the B, first finger comes down onto the D sharp. Fourth finger off to expose the B, fourth finger back down, and then second finger stays down as the anchor into an E7 chord. So there's nothing really going on with this other than playing an A major to a B7 with your fingers. Your right hand is doing a lot of the work here and presenting for our ears the inversions of the chords. to the scale one, which we will check out in the next micro study. Welcome to the two turnaround bars. So turnaround bar number one, we left it off here at E7. With the next couple of options I show you, you have to finish on a two so that you can get into chord number one back at the top of the piece. It is now possible to start putting some hammer-ons in. Remember we're in triplets. One, two, three. So it's not straight. Not straight. So keeping your triplets, it's possible to hammer on some of these notes to make it a little bit more fluid. As long as you keep the triplets in there, it should be fine. So that is option one, and that is my preferred option. Two, four. Zero, two, four. One, two. Zero. Two, three, zero, two. But it is obviously, it is possible to use some three fingered scales if you wish to. So it's two, four, zero, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, and then back into that two. Okay, turn around bar number two. Kicks it off with an E7 chord again. Notice how I'm using PPI, PPB, IMA. So you can just do a nice big old P strum. We then move into a D chord. Now you could finger it that way. And the next chord that way as well. But what I would suggest is easier is half bar with a second finger in the middle. D, E at the 4th fret, and then bounce back to a 4 string bar at 2 for that A chord. It is also possible to do half bar, half bar, full bar, if you want to. Either way, Villalobos has specified 6 beats for that E. So for the 
first time in this piece, those two are ringing over each other. This is a great section to make music, so please have fun with it, that's the main thing. The most challenging thing for this though is to make sure that these chords are legato. So if you need to connect them with guide fingers and little violin, little violin slides on the fingers, use smart fingering and obviously use your ears to really make this. And again we have a pumoso which is a push a little bit more in this section. Once we've finished up, we go back to the top of the piece for the repeat of the A section, which I've already done and covered in the first video. Thank you very much for staying until the end. This has been brought to you by classicalguitarrocks.com the home of the Villa Lobos 12 and 12 Challenge, the only place that you can get all Villa Lobos' 12 attitudes, in-depth bar-by-bar breakdown with all the fingerings and hacks that you need. If you're looking for a little Brazilian six-string inspiration today, head over to classicalguitarrocks.com.